Welcome to the ship room. You're on the air. Oh Hey everyone, in 1879, Thomas Edison invented the light bulb, and about 100 years later, the state of Massachusetts invented my next guest. <laughs> Please welcome Jeff Monaco, CTO of General Electric. Thank you very much for having me. So at GE, how do you balance between being really hands-on with those end users versus letting them choose the tools that they need to get their job done? We certainly do both. Um, we, we allow uh, choice to our employees, whether or not it's choice of devices, choice of software, but we also actually uh, have a very mature way of looking at you know, the, the shadow IT, yeah. we call it self-procured applications, where, <laughs> <laughs> where we sort of, we tolerate what we think we, we okay. can, uh, we block what we really should have to, but but allows employees to really pick the apps or the capabilities that we're looking for to solve the biggest challenges that we have. And, and we are an enabler of that technology rather than a, you know, the policing and governing body yeah. of that. Um, but, but really it's a balancing app because you have to educate the users. There's a lot of, uh, unfortunately, Fortunate ignorance um, around what's safe and secure, and so really providing the education, awareness, and and really try to stay clear of the of the stuff that is most uh, impactful to G. You know, at least one of the things that I've learned over the years is you can actually look at those self-procured, user-procured apps. Okay, mm -hmm. and that actually is a good kind of roadmap for what your users are asking for, and so in many ways that research is actually a, a, a good insight of where you want to go. There's quite a bit of figure skating in your family. It's I amazing. have four daughters, all figure skaters. So I want you to do is I want you to look at this monitor right here. All right. Can you tell me what move this is? Uh, I have no idea. My daughters will kill me. <laughs> <laughs> all right. So we're not going to let them see this. Let's do something simple. Can you tell me how to perform a triple axel? You pay a lot of money to a coach <laughs> over many, many years and you wake up at 5.30 in the morning, you practice pretty much six days a week. What move are we seeing there? I think it's like a triple axel probably or something, a triple jump or <laughs> I think that's how many times he turned around. Yeah, you definitely have the jump part, right? right. <laughs> how many years have you been doing this? My oldest daughter's 15. She's been skating since she was four. And look how much you've learned along the way. I, <laughs> I probably should have learned more. <laughs> we can cut that out if we need to. <laughs> Someone is calling on the team's phone. Okay. Ooh. Nice. Hello, you're on the ship room with Jeff Monaco. Who's this? Hi, Mr. Anderson. This is me, Nora. Oh, you know, hey, this is Nora. This is my next door neighbor. She loves IT. Thanks, Brad. But I actually have some questions for Jeff. You ready? Far away. In five to 10 years, what will a worker's day look different? Is email gone? Are meetings going? Most jobs just work from home. Okay, let's take that one at a time. So is email gone? I don't think email is gone. I think it gets minimized to a point of really sort of focused work and you know more formal communication, so it's mostly gone. Um, does everybody work from home? I think that uh, I think that the workplace, the concept of the workplace changes dramatically. Co-working, work from home, work from anywhere is is certainly going to be the trajectory as everyone's moving towards. Um, I think that you know that's that's great transformation that we can see there. Um, but uh, but also just the work in terms of automation intelligence goes is different. I mean I think that collaboration is still key for employees to get decisions be made. But I think they're relying upon a lot more data going forward. On that note, is there anything not in the cloud? Are desktops almost not existent? So I think that um, desktops will always remain in some sort of form or fashion. Yeah, I, I think agree. local compute will always be uh, something that's leveraged, maybe more for uh, you know sort of the massive complex challenges that we have, but I can't wait to rely upon smaller devices in my day yeah. for more and more of my compute. But um, but yeah, I think that we really get to uh, to enjoy the the sort of Moore's law as we go yeah. on compute power as we as we see. But I think that you know virtualization, you know mobility becomes the norm more than anything. Oh, question: What's the favorite type of shark? Uh, great whites are my favorite. 
So companies that are really big like GM, you guys are huge. Mm -hmm. You have some very unique challenges. Mm -hmm. You've got offices all over the world, people are spread out everywhere. Mm -hmm. And it can really lead to people working in silos. Right. Communication can break down. You know, mm -hmm. ideas can just get overlooked and missed. Right. So how are you working to improve collaboration? So as a company, um, we've really tried to take a shift on moving the center of gravity towards the businesses as well as those local businesses to make local decisions. We're, we're big fans of the concept of team of teams and mission-based teams, so really empowering those local teams to make decisions yeah. based on what's right for customers or, or outcomes that they're chasing in, in that spot. Um, but, but communication collaboration, especially top-down communication, is, is so critical. Um, ironically, we, we do a tremendous amount of, of broadcasts, yes. um, um, more, more than, than you'd, you'd ever expect. Really? <laughs> Absolutely. <laughs> um, probably, I think, about 600 <laughs> per month right now. Wow. So people have a lot of opportunity to understand what, uh, what the principles are, what's coming up next. Our employees are given ample opportunity to ask questions, very, very challenging questions. Um, to the leadership to get to get guidance on what's happening, whether or not that's a regional or a product area or a functional area. We, we, that two-way dialogue is, is super critical. Yeah, so as you think about um, where GE wants to head in the next 10 to 15 years, what's the role of technology going to play? And what do you think are the most important things for you to focus in in your role? We have to play equal parts solution provider as much as sort of, you know, servants to that, to those, oh, uh, those needs of the business. Um, we have to listen tremendously more than we do today um, and, and sort of react in real time um, and really provide those, uh, those, those capabilities that, that the business need when they need them. The principles are universal. I think the principles of being a great listener, being a great learner, mm -hmm. uh, I guess great advice for all of us. Okay, so while you've been talking, there's been this machine learning bot that's been analyzing everything we've been talking about. And the algorithm has developed 12 most relevant questions for us to discuss right now. Okay. Let's put up a timer. Off we go. Generally speaking, how many times have you been electrocuted? Uh, six. In one word, what's the state of Massachusetts shaped like? A hockey stick. Would you work for General Electric if it was only a lieutenant or captain electric? Yes. <laughs> if you had to pick one boss and team that would never win a championship again, which would it be? The revolution. What do you call someone if you forget their name? Hey, you. <laughs> What's your favorite move in a hockey fight? Uppercut. What about the pulling the sweater up over the head or the Ooh, shirt over the head? Too. That was my second. Hey, so Jeff, this has been so much fun. Before you go, tell everyone if they want to, you know, learn more about what you're doing and kind of the change you're driving at GE. How they how they follow you? You can connect with me on on LinkedIn, of course, um, and uh, follow me on Twitter at Jeff R Monaco. Thanks everyone for watching. I'm Brad Anderson from The Ship Room. We'll see you the next time. Hey, Jeff. Big. Big. Is he more on? We have some interesting points today. Hey everyone, now that you've watched this episode of The Ship Room, I really recommend that you go to microsoft365.com shift and learn how to get started deploying Windows 10 and Office 365.